Good morning, everyone. I'm Apostle TV Walker. I guess good afternoon. Uh, listen, we had a couple glitches, so we weren't able to come on right at 12, but we're here now at 12:12. So glad to have you all that are on with us right now, that are uh, looking at this video. We are here for our Sunday morning worship in the Word with Apostle TV Walker. I'm the pastor of Disciples of Faith Global Outreach, where we are reaching the world one share at a time. Again, certainly glad to have you here with us. There is a word today for the people. There's certainly a word that I want you to be able to receive today that I think is going to be important for what we're doing and even understanding what's going on in our world, what's going on in the whole globe, but also what's going on in our nation and where God's people actually fit into this whole equation and what God is doing in the midst of this time. You know, we're going to be coming out of the book of Daniel today. I'm going to be reading out of Daniel chapter number 10, and I'm going to be just reading out of, starting at verse number 20. Once again, don't forget, don't forget to press the share button. It's an easy thing to do. It won't cost you anything. But listen, let's get into the word. Daniel chapter 10, verses 20 through 21. And it reads, Do you know why I've come to you? I must return at once to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I leave, the prince of Greece will come. However, I will tell you what is recorded in the book of truth. No one has the courage to support me against those princes except Michael, your prince. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you once again for your word. We thank you for what you're doing right now in this time and for your divine messages and messengers in this very same hour. God, we just thank you right now that as uh, your people are joined, it, joined together in the spirit all around the world, God, that you're speaking to us the same thing, that you're ministering to us the very same things, and God, that you're causing us to begin to receive the very same promises all throughout the world all throughout all of Christendom. So God, we bless you. We thank you for the global view of ministry in this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, once again, let's take a look at this word. It says, uh, do you know why I've come to you? I must return at once to fight against the prince of Persia. And then he says, after that, the prince of Greece is going to come. Now, in, in this cap chapter number 10, where Daniel was ministering, we know that Daniel was talking about and he's praying about the future of God's people. He's praying concerning what's going to happen, not only with the people of God, the children of Israel that are now in exile in Persia, um, but he's also now wondering what their future is going to be. Now, an, an angel has now been dispatched to answer him, but we understand that the prince of Persia, according to the scripture, obstructs this angel. Now, the prince of Persia is only mentioned here in uh, Daniel chapter 10. You know, he's not mentioned anywhere else. And what the, who the prince of Persia is had been some, uh, you know, some subject or well, a subject of discussion. But as you begin to look at this, one of the things you'll find about the prince of Persia is that the prince of Persia here is not necessarily dealing with the actual physical prince in that area it wasn't necessarily dealing with Cyrus or or Cambries or any of the other princes of Persia physical but this is a fallen angel this is an evil entity that is able to wield some influence or power behind the scenes in this area of Persia specifically concerning God's people i want you to understand this that though God talk it, it is true that the king's heart is in the Lord's hand, and he turns it however he wills. We recognize that God is sovereign over kingdoms, and even the political actions of kingdoms are oftentimes based upon or motivated by those things that are happening in the angelic realm, the spiritual realm, should we say. But I want you to understand here, this is not simply God dealing with politics. This is not the angels coming down and dealing with elections, you know, moving people toward democratic agendas or moving someone toward a Republican platform. Absolutely not. The angels here that, that are being dealt with and even the demonic angels here are here for one purpose. They are here to destroy the works concerning God's people. They are there, the prince of, of, of Persia, the, the spirit, the evil spirit behind the prince of Persia, the, the demonic fallen angels that are assigned and given authority in Persia to hinder the move of God and to hinder the people of God. Michael said, the, the angel comes and says, 
I heard you immediately. The, the, your, your prayer was heard because God is omnipotent. But he says, the answer that I had concerning you was held up because there was an obstruction. And when you begin to look at this, the, the divine answer that God was giving was involving the overthrow of the Persian Empire. It was going to be the end. And listen, the angel that was over Persia didn't want Daniel to hear it because if Daniel heard it, he was going to speak it. And he didn't want it spoken because if Daniel heard it and spoke it, it would encourage the people of God. And he didn't want the people of God encouraged at all. But, but the angelic messenger says, but Michael who is the prince, who is the prince of Israel, who is the helper that was assigned now to Israel, to the, who is over the doings and the protection even of Israel, he says he came to help me in the angelic realm. So now he comes and says, now, do you know what I've, what I, what I've come to say to you? Do you understand now your mission? He's referring back now to the earlier chapters, the verses in chapter 10, saying, listen, I know you've been praying about your people. I want to reveal to you what's going to happen to your people. This infers that Daniel is absolutely aware because he's been praying about this. And the angel says, I've come to make you understand what shall befall your people in latter days. That's what he says. So he says, I want you to understand exactly what's going to happen. And he begins to talk about the overthrow. There's revelation he's going to give in chapter number 11. But he also says, now I've got to return at once to fight against the prince of Persia. Daniel, your prayer has been heard. Your prayer now has been answered, but I have to go right now. I can't stay any longer than is necessary because there's still contention that has to happen in heaven. In the midst of this revelation, he says the work is yet not done. Israel is not yet protected. The reality is that he's talking about this is allowed, this is protection that happens during Persian sovereign rule. Now, why is that so important for us? That Here's one of the things. The, one of the things you have to understand, the Lord does not yet at this time stop Persian rule. We understand that the Lord does not stop the even the, the, the attacks and the thwarts, that are, the, the things that are coming against the people of God. Uh, those plans are not stopped. He doesn't come and shut them down from planning. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God is now giving us some insight on how these weapons that are being formed against us are being thwarted. That he says, listen, you don't even realize in the spiritual realm that people are plotting against you. That, that as you begin to look at Esther, there was a major plots going on behind the scenes as people were walking around in their lives in high places. Understand this. That, that Esther was a queen. She was dealing with intrigue in palaces. That, that when you begin to look at what was going on behind the scenes and with Mordecai, Mordecai was a high official. So when you begin to understand what's going on here, the Bible here is telling us that there are things that are going on in high places that are geared for one reason and one reason only, and that is to destroy the works of God, that is to hinder the progress of God's people, and to remove the protection of God's people. But you understand that God says, as the enemy comes in like a flood, I'm going to raise up a standard against him. I already have a protector over my people. The reality is that as Israel was attacked, that Israel was exiled, that they looked absolutely weak. The, the, the angel here that is speaking saying that even the prayers of the righteous are being attacked in the spiritual realm. As we look at what's going on in the natural, we can get so caught up in what we see in the natural realm that we forget that the engine behind the natural is what's going on in the spiritual realm. I'm not talking about running around. I'm not talking about dancing. I'm talking about real spiritual warfare to such an extent that the angel was urgent and said, listen, I've given you the message. I've told you what needs to be done, but I've got to leave here. I can't tarry here with you. You know what? If the angel comes, you know, we just we would just be laughing and playing and talking and rejoicing. The angel says, there's nothing yet to rejoice about. 
Listen, the church is partying, playing games, and having ceremonies when the war is still raging. Do you understand that the angel comes to let Daniel know, yeah, the war is real. There's some, there's some spirits that are going on. Doesn't Paul say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness, rulers that are sitting in high places, people who are trying to make decisions about your life, about your morality, about your very existence. Don't you understand that if it were not for God behind the scenes, dispatching angels, giving them charge over us, that these plots would work. He's saying, listen, there's some plots going on, but the war is still raging. That this is not a time to end it. This is not a time to stop praying. This is not a time to raise our hands in victory and declare that it's over. He says there's spiritual warfare yet going on. And not only that, there's going to be more spiritual warfare. That the war is still raging. He said, listen, I've got to go now. After As soon as you get this, have you received this yet, Daniel? Because as soon as you get this, I need you to understand that the enemy is going to try to still thwart the promise that I just gave you, that the, the encouragement that I just gave you, the empowerment that you just received. Do you understand that the enemy now comes and he gives it and then he turns because he realized I've got to fight the enemy from trying to come and take what I just gave you? Do you realize there's going to be some things I'm telling you about who you are. There's some things that are going to happen next week that are going to come to try to defy who you are. If I, the spirit goes before us, you know, Jacob leaves and, and the Bible says, you know, as Jacob begins to return, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord went before him and caused terror and dread before he got there. Do you understand that if it were not for the very footsteps of God that make our steps feel and sound heavier, the enemy would eat us up. But the Lord is trying to tell us right now that behind the scenes, he's working. And listen, I want you to see this. He says, and when I leave, the prince of Greece is going to come. Listen, get this. And listen, this is not just for us. This is for generations to come. He says, listen, you want to know what's going to happen to your people, right? You want to under, you want to understand what's going on because Daniel was about the exile. He wanted to know when is this going to be over? You know, we've gone here, been captured by the Babylonians. And then he spoke uh, concerning Belch Belshazzar. And he says, you know, listen, you, you know, you've been, you've been weighed in, in the balance and found wanting. And he prophesied the fall of the Babylonian kingdom and prophesied that the Persians and the Medes were going to take over this kingdom. And now he's still in captivity, but in now the Persians are in line. And, 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 the, and the Lord actually lets Daniel know that, listen, there's spiritual warfare. The reason why you're here is not geopolitical. The reason why you hear, you're here is not military. The reason why you're in captivity right now is absolutely part of a divine plan. The reason why you're at the lowest rung of the economic ladder, the reason why you're at the lowest rung of the political ladder, the reason why you're at the lowest rung of the social ladder is a part of my plan. And I recognize that there are people who are saying, when, Lord, when does our time coming? How long are we going to be in this? And Daniel comes and he's praying the very same thing. How long are we going to be here? I appreciate the promotion of me, but we're in the minority here. How long before we get the land back? How long before we get our return back? How long? And, and God comes through this angel. He sends the angel to give him a message and says, there's warfare. Listen, I know what you're thinking. The prognosis is not as good as you think. The reality is that there's a prince of Persia, there's a spirit that's fighting against you now, that's fighting against your freedom and fighting against your captivity. And guess what, Daniel? After you're dead, you need to teach people how to pray because the reality is that they're going to need some more Daniels after you're gone because there's another prince. The prince of Greece is going to come. And when you begin to look at this, he says there's another spiritual enemy that's waiting in the wings. Fight after fight after fight. Listen, the victory's not going to happen here. And he's telling Daniel, it's not even going to happen in your lifetime. When we, we understand history, when you understand history, this comes to pass through Alexander the Great 200 years after this. What does this mean? 
I'm not prophesying that you're coming out right now. I'm not prophesying. I mean, listen, it, when, when you get out of this, because the truth of the matter is, there's going to, the exiles are going to be released long before Alexander the Great comes in. But guess what? God says there's going to be another enemy coming after this. One of the things we need to get is that we have a problem because we once we recover and, and overcome one adversary, once we receive victory from one adversary, we miss what the angel is trying to say. The moment this adversary is dead, another one is going to arise. The children of Israel rejoiced like crazy because Pharaoh was dead and had no idea that on the other side of the Jordan, there were some other giants over there that you need to be prayed up and armed against. They didn't form the army that they were supposed to form. They formed a praise party. They, they, they got in line and danced when they were supposed to be sharpening their instruments. I want the church to know right now that no matter what victory, listen, look where we're living. Look how things are. Things are better than ever. No, there's another enemy coming. We came out of the pandemic. Let's go to the beach and let's get prepared to party. No, there's another enemy on the cusp. And I know people don't want to hear this. Daniel probably didn't want to hear this. Daniel had seen enemies all his life. And I'm sure he wanted a kumbaya message. He wanted a moment where somebody was going to say, in your lifetime, you're going to see. No, I'm telling you right now, prepare your children to fight. Prepare your children for spiritual warfare. Prepare your children to understand what it is like to know how to fight in the spiritual realm, how to war in the spiritual realm. Hey, look, we're back. I understand there was some buffering in the video, so we're going to just jump right back in. Uh, we were talking about this prince of Greece, this, this, uh, that, that Greece is going to come and dominate Israel for a time. So understanding what the Lord was actually telling his people, he was telling them this was not a time for celebrations. This was not a time for partying. This was not a time for frivolous thinking and frivolous living. But that this is a time that they've got to really begin to recognize that the war is not over. That even what appears to be domination is not over. When you begin to look at this, Persia is not the only one that has a demonic angel assigned to it. And listen, I'm not saying that, there are demonic, that, that there's a demonic angel assigned to America. But I believe that as you begin to look at this, and I think the reason why this is here is that Wherever God's people are, you have to understand that the Bible says we have an adversary who is as a roaring lion seeking as who he, who he may devour. And the truth of the matter is, as the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. It would make no sense to think that somehow the enemy is going to stop these attacks. Wherever God's people are, wherever there is a nation that has God's people, even in bondage, you've got to understand that there's a spirit over that. There's a spirit over Egypt that was keeping Pharaoh. The Bible says his heart was actually hardened. There's a spirit there that was keeping Pharaoh from allowing the people of Israel to go without force. There was a spirit in Persia and in Babylon that kept the people, that kept the kings from releasing and doing even what they knew was the will of God. That we saw backwards and forwards that they would sometimes even agree. They could, they would agree with it. They would testify that, listen, I know that this is what God wants. And then something would happen. A spirit would come in and they would change their minds. Let the children of Israel go. And then a spirit would come in and they would say, no way. Let the children of Israel go. And then a lie would come into the, into the courts and they would say, no way. As you begin to look at what we're going through, even in this country, I need you to understand that just as there's a spirit over person, and just as there was a spirit over Egypt, I suspect that there is a spirit over America that is trying to pervert God's people in the exact same way. Not from leaving the country, going to another country, but perverting the assignment of victory that God's people are assigned to. And so when you begin to look at this, this is we see these three spiritual entities that are mentioned here. There's the spirit of Persia, the spirit of Greece. But also, we also see the Prince of Israel, Michael. 
And when you begin to look at this, you begin to see exactly what's going on, that the battle is real. We're not wrestling against what we think. We're not wrestling against the kind of apathy politically. We're not wrestling against financial or economic issues. We are wrestling against authorities, against these powers these, in the darkness of the world, in the darkest corners of the world. There, there's a plot. And listen, I'm not one of those weirdos that's out there thinking, I see the devil everywhere. I see, you know, I see this everywhere. No, no, no. This doesn't just take discernment. This is a revelation that God is actually giving that there's a battle that's going on for the souls of, of God's people. That, listen, if you can keep them in slavery, they will continue to think like slaves. If you can keep them behind the fence, they'll never see the promises of God because the promises of God are behind the fence or outside the fence. But the promises of God, what the enemy doesn't know, is also inside the fence. As Daniel was inside the fence, I need you to understand, the Bible says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When you look at the position of the believer, we're not out of place because we are surrounded. We are not out of place because the Persians seem like they're in charge. We are not out of sorts, out of whack, unarmed because the Babylonians seem like they've got it all going on. The reality is that we are in this world and not of this world and our protections are not in this world. Our protections are not of this world. And Daniel was a man who showed us one thing, if nothing else, there is power in connective prayer. And I want you to get that. There's power in connective prayer. I'm not talking about just simple prayer. But, but listen, because our whole idea of prayer can oftentimes just be whining and complaining. But connective prayer, the, the, the angel came down and said, let me tell you how God sees you. When you have connected prayer, prayer empowers you. See, listen, there are many people that go into the prayer closet and come out relieved simply because they got it off their chest. Daniel came out empowered. Daniel came out with a message. How many people fell down, got up, the Lord was all over them, and they can't tell you anything? Let me tell you something. I'd rather have you stand up like Daniel stood up and be able to hear the message. The angel said, I didn't come to knock you down. I didn't come to make you run around the church. I came to give you a message concerning your people. I'm not here to make sure you can shake like everybody else shakes. I want you to have a message for your family. One of the reasons why so much is not working in the church, because we know how to dance, but we have no vision for our household, no vision for our business, no vision for our children, but we have a, we understand the vision that God gave Abraham. If you really did, because listen, let's, let's understand this. If you really did, you'll find out that Abraham didn't do any backflips. Abraham built the altar that God has told us to build. This is a building time. This is a fortifying time. And if you are about celebrating, if you think that this is a time, listen, we celebrate when we win. God says, I'm calling you a winner, but winners still have to win. And in order to win, you've got to be able to fight having done all to stand. He was telling Daniel, listen, I don't want you to get disappointed when it gets crazy out here. Why are we falling? Because we're hearing another message and not the message from God. We're hearing a message that it's about to come around, that it's about to turn over, that somebody's about to give it to you. They're not giving you anything they never have. The reality is the Bible says, and, and, and the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. There's some stuff that's just going to have to be grabbed hold of. And unless you are empowered by your own prayer, you're going to be in trouble. If you go into your prayer room as a wimp and come out as a wimp, I don't have any idea who you were talking to. But it's impossible. Daniel prayed and the angel came down and said, I need to first empower you. You need to get excited. The problem with so many of us is that we're not excited. And I get it because we're not getting a message from God. You're just getting a regurgitated message from your friend. You're just talking to somebody, but you're not talking to God, to the divine. When you begin to look at this, this is important where Daniel now is ready to empower people because he's an empowered man himself. Listen, you can't empower anybody until you're empowered. I hope you get this. I hope you recognize this. 
God came to empower Daniel with a prophecy that wasn't going to taste good. Do you understand that? But, but listen, at the end of this, he says, do you understand? You can either look at the fact that you got princes against you or you can look at the prince that's for you. I want you to get that. Then listen, when you hear, when we hear prophecy, and we, you know, we get scared when you hear a prophecy that this was a bad prophecy. Listen, the, the, the enemy's going to come in like a flood. You got adversaries all around you, and you know, people. There's haters everywhere, and we flip out, we trip out, and we forget. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God is for me, who can be against me? Yeah, weapons that are formed, to get, they're, they're going to form, but they're not going to prosper. See, listen, we put so much emphasis on the weapons, on the haters, you know, on those that don't like me. You talked about me, and we forget about the prince that's there for you. He said, listen, I'm telling you right now, don't forget, Michael's here. If you look at verse 21, here's what he says. He says, listen, what I'm going to tell you, is recorded in the book of truth. In other words, this is already determined by God. Listen, you can't pray out of this. You know what? I rail at this in so many ways because I hear people, in, in, you know, oftentimes get into situations and they look and they say, um, in difficult situations, even situations that we look at as bad, that I, I, I recognize that people we'll see five years from now we're totally ordained by God. And here's what they said. You didn't pray. Spirit would have told you not to go in that direction. Not true. The spirit here is telling Daniel it's going to get rough. And we, you know, listen, part of this is we've made God, you know, a, a way maker out of rough ways. And we don't recognize that God is a one who takes us through rough ways. He says, I'll take you through the flood. See, we, we forget that. Our, our only thinking is the Red Sea. Our only thinking is flying over it. Our only thinking, we just don't know the God who will take us through the famine. So the reality is that God is saying, no, no, no. Everything that I spoke here is going to happen. There's going to be additional periods of slavery. There's going to be additional periods of bondage. There's going to be additional periods of domination. As we struggle with things that we struggle with in our own country, we look and say, this is crazy. And God has said, no, I'm telling you right now, the people of God are going to have struggles and enemies are going to constantly, the moment you raise up and they know that you know who you are, don't you recognize they're going to hate you? But if you look to them, you will struggle. Look unto me, the author and the finisher of your faith. The Lord has said, listen, you remember how I brought you out of bondage? Remember how I brought you out of the reconstruction? Remember how I brought you out of this? I brought you out of Jim Crow. So when you look at that, there, there are folks that have been in the poverty in the hills of Appalachia, in the midst of, of nothingness. Black folks, white folks, Asian you know, listen, it's the same God who's saying, remember when they hated you out west? Remember they called you a coolie? Didn't I bring you out because you looked at me? Remember when they called you a wet back and they thought you were nothing, but you kept looking unto me, the author and the finisher of your faith, and didn't I bring you out? But there's going to be adversaries against your freedom. There's going to be adversaries constantly. So what I'm saying to you is this is not the time to celebrate. This is not the time to bring out the pinata. This is not the time for the backyard cookout. This is not the time for the big convocation. This this is not the time for the party. This is the time to get sober because you have an adversary who is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And anybody on the fringes who is not in the game, in the middle of the fight, can get lulled to sleep and will be eaten. And this is, this is literally written and predetermined. So the ultimate war is still to come. What's this message today? Listen, this is this stuff is old, right? This is this happened in Persia, and this is this happened in Greece, and, and it actually happened. But the Lord is prophesying to us the very same thing: there is an ultimate war that's yet to come. Yeah, the the Greek, they they came first. This was written in a book. But the reality is, the nation had a protector, an angelic protector in Michael. So, listen, what what what's the word for us? Well, the Lord said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Israel had an angel that, that was the protector, but we have one greater than any angel that is the protector and the ultimate fulfillment of this protection 
will come with, with the return of Jesus Christ. That's ultimately when we'll see this. I want to read something to you. It's out of Revelation chapter 16. This is verse 13 through 14. Here's what it says. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the prophet. They are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs. And they go out, get this, they go out to the kings. And, and listen, this is so important. They go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Listen, there's a day when this demonic influence is going to come to its apex. Listen, we have this kingdom and that kingdom and this kingdom. And, and as you begin to look at this, you know, you see a, an influence here, but maybe not here. But that's because God's people have not been here. They're not here. And then you see an influence here an influence here, but not here. But as the world becomes smaller and we become much more global in our citizenry, then you realize that God's people now are everywhere. And so the ultimate climax of this action is going to be the kings of the world will gather together for one purpose. against They're going to fight against God and his people. Now, Daniel doesn't give us all the information, but what Daniel does tell us is that behind the scenes, God gives angels charge over us who have one job, and that's to render service wherever we are. That is as protection over us. But the ultimate protection is this. It is the Lord. He is our protector. He, you know what? Israel has an angel that's a protector, but the church has the Lord who says, I'll build this church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If that's true, you've got to understand that they're going to certainly try. That's the goal. Here's what Paul said. I want you to get this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in power is might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Listen, this is so important because Jesus is our protector and we need him behind the scenes. So as we begin to look for answers, let's look above just simply the natural realm. Let's recognize that no matter what we do, what, no matter what we do, no, no matter how many laws we sign, we can't change the hearts of people who hate God's people. No, no matter what legislation is there, no matter what agreement you get, Pharaoh still came to himself and came back to who he was and said, what did I just do? Did I just let these people go? And he assembled an army to go and take back the very people that he had literally given up. He didn't free them. He can't free them. God is the only one who will ultimately be able to free his people. So listen, let's get free in Jesus today. And I want you to really, really receive that. Let's get free in Jesus today. Let's recognize that the war is on. Let's get back into our word to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, that, that we are workmen, that we are really workmen, not, not game players, you know, not, not, not a bunch of soothsayers, but that we're really workmen who are able to rightly divide the word of truth. And listen, I'm going to tell you why that's so important, because the enemy has the word and he's ready to pervert it. For all of those who simply don't know it. If you don't know it, you'll get sucked into cults. If you don't know it, you'll get sucked into lies. If you don't know it, you'll be sucked into apathy and will be left behind. That's the goal of the adversary. But it is the Lord who comes with this message to his Daniels out there to say, I heard you. I heard you when you prayed. And listen, I know you can handle this information I'm about to give you militarize your people around you, arm them and let them know, listen, the war is on. We got to go out there and we've got to hit the streets like never before. Let them know, listen, we, we've got to study. We've got to put together the Bible studies back again. We've got to get together and start praying together because this works. And we recognize the enemy is coming against the prayers of God's people. So real prophets and intercessors have to come out of the woodworks to begin to fight in the spiritual realm so that we can see the progress in the natural realm. If nobody prays for the schools, nothing will happen in these schools. If nobody prays for the White House, nothing will happen in the White House. But when my people, who are called by my name, if they'll humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, the Lord says, I'll heal, I'll, I'll, I'll hear the people and I'll heal the land. That's our prayer today. And I hope you receive that today. Listen, let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you once again for your people and for even the ears that are hearing. God, we just bless you right now that as this message will go out to even untold numbers, God, we just thank you right now that as people are sharing this, as they're, as they're going to regurgitate this information to other people, as they're going to share it in the ears of their loved ones, God, we just pray right now that people would receive it, that they apprehend the message, that they'll realize that there's fighting going on in the spiritual realm, but for them and on their behalf, and that no weapon formed against God's people shall actually prosper. And we bless you right now for victory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a great Sunday.